Okay, before we get into the full raw diet that I like to feed, uh, let's clarify a point here. There are two schools of thought when feeding raw. Uh, one school of thought says feed no vegetables at all. Uh, dogs eat raw whole animals and that's all they eat. Um, I don't subscribe to that school of thought. Uh, I've seen dogs nibble on grasses, eat little berries here and there. Uh, they eat the entrails of their victims that they eat, uh, that they kill, they eat their entrails. And, and what they kill and eat are plant-eating animals, so they're obviously eating some parts of plants then and getting some type of vitamins and nutrients from that, albeit small, it's still a part of their diet. So this is how I, this is how I personally approach this issue is uh, with a big plate of vegetables. Now, this big plate of vegetables obviously is not for one dog and it's not even exclusively for my dogs at all. What I've done is with my girlfriend, uh, we've made a lifestyle switch. Uh, rather than cooking vegetables and having them on our plate when we eat, what we do is we juice. Um, you just go to Walmart, buy a $50 big mouth juicer, and then I take a big plate of really good vegetables. You don't have to use all of this stuff, uh, but this is what I use. I have a little cauliflower, I have a little broccoli, uh, a few radishes, a lot of celery. You can see it under here, a lot of carrots. And, uh, oops, that was one of them. But uh, there's also Brussels sprouts here, and I have a couple of cloves of garlic, a jalapeno pepper, and in this case, I'm really splurging. I got some asparagus and I've got two tomatoes. Okay, this here, what happens here, obviously in the juicer, so I'm going to put all this stuff in the juicer and I collect it here. This is nothing but pure vitamin enriched goodness for me and my girlfriend to enjoy and then the rest of it is garbage. Well, here's where the dogs come in. Rather than just throw away this garbage, I get to use my vegetables twice. So if you're trying to pinch pennies and yet uh, feed your dogs optimally, this is the way I do it. You might find a different way, but I turn, I, I use what vegetables I buy twice. I forgot to add Mr. Cucumber here. So I'm going to put all this stuff through here, make a wonderful full day's worth of vegetable juice to sip morning, noon, and night for my girlfriend and I. And all of this garbage is pulp that I add to the dog's diet. Uh, since dogs don't really digest plant matter very easily, it's already kind of pre-digested for them. It's ground up in little bitty bits. And unlike kibble, which may, they may throw all these vegetables in there and they burn the bejesus out of it into little pellets. Well, we're not burning anything. It's raw. But we are creating a situation, yeah, we got a lot of the uh, nutritious juice for ourselves, which is fine. That's the way I want it. But they're, they're, believe me, there's still plenty of moist juice and nutrients in the pulp that is left behind. So. Uh, it's pretty easy to do, and uh, let me move this out of the way. Get this a little more front and center. I just set this thing like this and then process the whole bit. It's very easy. I don't, most of you probably have seen a juicer before. But those of you who have not, they're, I don't know, they're about 50 bucks, but they're actually great. And you make a lot of great tasting uh, stuff for yourself. You can do, I also do uh, apples, oranges, bananas, a ginger root, and cranberries. Mix all that up in the morning. And I'll add that, I'll give the dogs a dessert, a little sweet treat. But those are some fruits and cranberries are, cranberries are really good for the kidneys too. But here we go. Let me see, I'll start with something big. We'll do the celery. I normally, inside the celery is where I put my garlic and my jalapeno peppers because sometimes if you just put the straight garlic, small things in here, it whisks them through too quick without processing them. So if you stick a few things of celery in there, it kind of keeps everything stable so that it doesn't get whisked away quite so easily. But if you put it in with a bunch of other stuff, it kind of holds it firm and lets these uh, grater on the bottom uh, distribute it evenly. And then you pretty much just keep adding stuff in.
put that away. And you gotta be careful with this thing, because it still leaks. Look at that. You got all this pulp here. Okay? This is for you. Let me take this off. That's a big jar of vegetable juice right there that I'm going to save later for us. Just put a, a thing over it. And this can go and get washed up. You have to wash this stuff right away. But right here, if you look and see, you've got a whole bunch of stuff that you can add uh, to your dog food. I use about three tablespoons per dog. And like I said, this will feed about ten dogs. While at the same time, uh, that juice will provide I mean, excellent nutrition for my girlfriend and I. Now, you may not be into eating vegetables, and that's okay, but if you make this switch, not only will you have a healthier lifestyle and probably live longer, but so will your dogs. It doesn't take much time at all to do. I do this in the morning for my dogs. Um, I'm a professional dog man, so I don't go to work. This is work. But if you have a job, you can do this at night. Your wife can do this at night and uh, store it in a little uh, Tupperware thing and then dish it out in the morning or even feed at night. Uh, uh, it's up to you, whatever fits your schedule. So I'm going to uh, clean all this stuff up. I'm going to add this to a bowl and then I'm going to show how I do the full meal presentation uh, that I give both the puppies as well as to the adults. The only difference between the puppy diet and the adult diet is I, I chop the puppies diet up for them if they're too small. So we'll get into that. Okay. Uh, this is how I prepare my dog's food. You may use a different system, you may use different ingredients. But a lot of people like to know what I do for my dogs, and uh, this is the meal I provide them, this is how I provide it. Uh, this is a thing of rice, first of all. I have 10 dogs, so I need 10 cups of rice. I typically make 12 cups of rice, just as I'd rather give too much than too little. Um, the argument is being made, well, cooked rice isn't raw. You're right. Cooked is not raw. It's a contradiction in terms. I call it raw because this is the most important thing in the diet is the chicken, the yogurt, and the uh, vegetables, and the eggs. Now, even the eggs are not raw, and I'll get into that in a minute. But I, you know, if I want to make 12 cups of rice, I have uh, four actual cups of rice and eight. Uh, additional cups of water and it gives me 12 cups of rice okay um, the chicken I get at Walmart um, where I go uh, it's five dollars ninety eight cents for ten pounds and my calculator tells me that that is fifty nine sixty cents a pound um, it's not bad you try chicken anywhere else and it's high now you can actually get chicken a lot cheaper if you have a poultry farmer near you um, if you're blessed with that, well then, by golly, get your chicken cheaper. You can use beef and whatnot. I like to use the chicken simply because it's convenient, it's size convenient. I don't have to deal with big slabs of beef that I've got to cut and get my hands all nasty with, etc. So I just use the chicken and it's got bone in it. If you do not feed just meat. Don't just feed hamburger or steak or heart or organs because dogs need bones. Uh, meat provides phosphorus and nitrogen needs to be offset with calcium and this is full of bones and to those who say well gosh the bones will really hurt my dogs and they'll splinter in their guts nonsense um, I say nonsense if it's raw now when you cook bones doesn't matter what kind but when you cook them you weaponize them they, they get hardened and then they can splinter and they can perforate a gut raw however they're a little more pliable they digest immediately so once again, not cooking it is preferred. Why do I cook the rice? As I said earlier in the DVD, uh, if I feed just grain rice to the dog, it'll go out the same way as it comes in. So when you cook the rice, you make it valuable. Why do I add rice? It's low budget. I can get this very cheap at Walmart. You can go to restaurant supply houses and get rice really cheap. I just go to Walmart for convenience. I don't like driving more than I have to because I live way out in the middle of nowhere and when I drive it's a long drive to get anywhere. So uh, I just go to Walmart. I get plenty of it, stock up on it. But it's a substitute for fats and oils. If you want to do better than this, uh, get you some salmon oil, uh, flax oil, 
oils are better for dogs, but again, this is for convenience. This isn't going to hurt them. Even if you buy the most optimal canine uh, kibbled feeds, you'll see brown rice, brown rice, brown rice, brown rice. Uh, you can get white rice. I get brown rice just because I can get it about as cheap as I can get the white rice, but it's just a filler. It's just to add calories when you've got a, group, a large group of dogs. You don't want them getting too skinny. So it's just a filler. That's all that it is, is a filler. It won't harm them. Rice is uh, hypoallergenic. It's not going to cause any reactions like corns, wheats, barleys, things like that can cause allergic reactions. Dogs chewing themselves all the time, itching themselves all the, all the time. The rice is not going to cause that to happen. So, as a matter of fact, to the rice, I even take this. This is nothing but a bunch of uh, oil that came out. My girlfriend last night, she, um, she made a meatloaf. She got a bunch of hamburger and she cooked it. She made meatloaf for it. Well, guess what? This is all the fat and oil that uh, was left over in the pan. Well, when this happens to you, you know, again, a lifestyle switch, when this happens to you, rather than just dumping that oil out, I add it right to the rice. Doing you fat thing. Doesn't want to come out so easy. That's what I do. And I take a nice big spoon and I mix it all in real good. Put this away. I just mix it up. Makes the rice taste better, makes it uh, better for the dogs. And I just mix it up real good. Enhances the flavor and it provides additional calories. This is what dogs do like: is the uh, is the oils uh, for energy and, and it's great for their coats. It makes their coats nice and glossy. Uh, that's really what dogs need. I'm I'm a little cheap by using only rice, but I got a lot of dogs, so I I do. But it's not it's not gonna hurt them. Everybody, anybody who see my dogs knows it's not gonna hurt them. I get uh, compliments all the time on my dogs, and I've got several 12 to 14 year old dogs that there's a difference between having a 14 year old dog that's fat as a hog with gray eyes with stuff coming out of the eyes and a 14 year old dog that runs around looking like a, a young dog with uh, beaming with vitality so being alive isn't the same thing as thriving my diet my dogs thrive on it okay so I mix that in real good and we'll put this on here I'll just put this over here Okay, so we've got the chicken here in the sink. I got my dog ready to eat right now. Um, we've got the chicken. I use basic, plain, fat-free yogurt. Why add yogurt? Again, another calcium source. It's a fat source. Um, and uh, it also has the probiotics. And what that does is it aids in the digestion. It has a little bacteria in there that aids in the digestion. Uh, Again, I call it a raw diet. This is raw. This is raw. This is raw. This is raw. But the reason why I cook the eggs, I do not hard boil them. Do not hard boil the eggs. But it's a, it's an absolute fact that the white of the egg uh, is better assimilated when cooked than raw. The yolk of the egg should be raw because it it has the vitamins. So when you cook the yolk, you actually devalue uh, the protein. I mean the, the nutrients, but the albumin, the egg white, is a little harder to digest raw than it is cooked. So that is why a soft boiled egg, which to me means if you put uh, eggs in, in te room temperature water, bring it to a boil. As soon as it starts boiling, count yourself two and a half minutes and take it off and run cold water on it. And that two and a half minutes will be a perfect soft boil. So what that does is it cooks the uh, white and leaves the yolk intact and uh, that's the most nutritious for the dog and I also include the eggshells. These vitamins are in case I miss anything. I've got 10 dogs, I use 5 vitamins, I break them in half, I toss them in a dog dish, break them in half, toss them in a dog dish. This here is the veggie mix that we made earlier uh, with the juicer and this is uh, just three tablespoons per dog, it gives me 10, so, you know sometimes it's two and a half, sometimes it's four depending on how much I stick in here but uh, wonderful, wonderful nutrients for the dog. Uh, and then this is, what in the world is this? This is lard. Why do I use lard? I'll show you in a minute. When I break off the vitamin pieces, uh, sometimes the dogs will just leave them there at the bottom of their dish. Okay. If I take a little glop of lard and stick the vitamin in the middle of it, 
um, and throw it in there, the dog will just hoover up the glob of lard and, and it's just fat, it's not going to hurt. Okay, regarding how much to feed, the general rule is one and a half to two percent of the dog's body weight. Um, if you've got little bitty dogs like I do, I cut these quarters in half, okay? I don't like to chop it because my whole yard of dogs knows what I'm doing and when I start to go to chopping this thing, the whole place breaks out in pandemonium, so I, I, I just push it through. Um, if I had a, a smaller dog, I might feed this. If I had a large, larger dog, I might feed that. If I had a 50 pounder, I might give him the whole thing. So uh, what I do is I, I get a, a measuring cup and I usually give every dog about one cup of rice. One full cup. That's actually about a cup and a half of rice. Okay? And I'll take that and I'll stick it here, let's say. A couple of rice. All right, let's say this is a bigger dog, so I'm going to give him some chicken. Throw that in there. I take the egg, again, a soft boiled egg. I just crack it, squeeze the yolk over a little bit. He's got that in there. And I take uh, a glop of yogurt. Again, if it's a, a mama on pups, I might put two glops of yogurt. This one is just a dog, so I give it a little glop of yogurt. I take some of the veggie mix that I put together. I give them two or three. I got quite a bit now, so I give them two or three. Okay, uh, then what I do is I take these little vitamins and I cut them in half. I just get a little slit right here. I get these at Sam's Club actually, but you can get the same thing as it's a little smaller in Walmart. Sam's Club, Walmart, same thing. I break them in half. Five full vitamins become ten half vitamins. And that's in case I miss any trace mineral, minerals or whatnot. Now, I don't usually give these things every day. I'll do it every other day. I go in here and I get a big glop of uh, lard, stick it in the middle for the proverbial uh, cherry on the pie or whatever, and I stick it in here. And that's a pretty darn good meal for any dog. It's big, it fills him up, it gives him uh, just about everything he could hope to have and I've been doing this a long time and my dogs have continuously looked good. Is it the best raw diet in the history of the universe? I don't know and I really don't care. It works and it works very very well. You might want to pull the rice out. You might want to substitute beef in a beef bone or, or venison in a venison bone. You might want to put deer guts and chicken livers. You can do, there's no real rules to follow but what I'm doing here is simple and it's very, very effective, and it works. Um, he's got a wide variety. It's certainly, <laughs> it's certainly, if I took the same meal, just imagine this now, if I took the same meal and chopped it up into little bitty pieces and ground it, ground it up, and then burned it and burned it and burned it until it's little dry pellets, even this meal would be dramatically diminished to worthlessness, just about, as a dog food. You know, sh scoop it out there. Again, the analogy I made comparing uh, kibbles to wholesome foods. If I took this bowl, let's say, and I filled it up with kibble, and I stuck, and I, and I, let's say I dumped it out in the grass, and then I took this, and I dumped it out in the grass, okay? As far as biological availability, that term we used earlier, what's biologically available, what the dog's able to utilize, digest, process, so that a very small stool comes out of it. This is biologically available. It's more, you know, most of it is raw. What's cooked is, even, even the rice, this is still better for a dog than the rice that they put in a kibble. The rice that they put in a kibble is cooked till it's so hard and it's just, it's powder, uh, just powder in a ball. Uh, the, the meat that's here is completely biologically available. The egg, although it is cooked, the, the outside portion the inside portion is still is still uh, yolky. Maybe I cooked a little too much, but it's still moist. It's still moist. If I put the same egg in a kibble, you see eggs in kibble. Oh, that looks real good on a label. But the trouble is, that's not what a little brown pellet is. Not what eggs look like. This is what eggs look like. <laughs> so even when you're feeding kibble and you read all these wholesome wholesome ingredients on that kibble, remember, if I took this and burned it and burned it and made, I've ruined it. 
kibble is essentially ruined and overcooked food. And they do it so that you could store it in a container. Can you imagine if I piled all this meat up in a, in a, in a, in a just a paper bag and left it at, uh, against a wall or in a little trash, you know, a little uh, holding bin and just left it at room temperature for a month? Uh, this would be pretty stinky within a day or so because it's biologically available. All these organisms are coming to devour it because the nutrients are all available. That's why things rot. That's what's called perishable. Well, when kibble is made, and again, I don't mean to go on a big anti-kibble tirade, but it's important to underscore the point, I believe. This is wonderful food for a dog, better than any kibble, any kibble made by any manufacturer, I don't care who it is because this is biologically available food. This is essentially what the very best kibbles are before the kibbling process. And what's more, if you have my book, The Dog Owner's Little Black Book or The Pitbull Bible, what's more is I've shown how you could make all of this for less than even the cheapest, most worthless kibbles there are. There simply isn't any excuse to feed kibble unless you are personally lazy, just too damn lazy to make your dogs the food. And I don't mean to uh, be combative, but that's my opinion. That's my honest, it's, it's, I know it, because if, if somebody really cares about their dogs, they make them their food. I know if, if uh, you had a baby, uh, uh, you're not going to feed them just little pellets. Here's your little pellets, son, or here's your little pellets, dear. You're going to try to give them good food. Why not do the same thing for the dogs? If you're serious about your dogs, I'm, I'm as serious as I can be about my dogs, and I want them to have good, good nutrition, and I'm sure you do too. I'm sure if you've bought this, that's what you want. And what's really, really neat about this diet is, as I've presented in the book, you can actually do this for as cheap as the cheapest kibble, the worst of the worst. You can actually do it for about half the cost of very expensive kibble, Timberwolf and Innova and all that other uh, gobbledygook. That's about $1.50 a pound for that stuff. This right here is about... 60 to 80 cents a pound depending on where you're at so it's actually half as expensive as that and about the same price as Old Roy but it's a lot better for Old Roy and even though this presentation is taking a while when, when I don't have a camera on me I mix this stuff up pretty quick and you can do it in, in segments like I mentioned you can do this at night have that ready at night just you know you wake up in the morning turn the turn the rice on uh, uh, Boil you some eggs, takes five or ten minutes to get that done, and then blah, 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 set this out, fill up the bowls, and off go feed your dogs. It's, it's pretty easy to do. But that's it. Now I'm going to show you the difference between, this is an adult diet for any type of adult. I'm going to show what I feed uh, a stud dog. I'm going to add something to it in a moment. Uh, my little secrets for the stud dog. And uh, I'm also going to show what kind of difference I there's only, really only one difference I do for puppies versus adults, and I'll show that in just a second here, okay? So, okay, with puppies, I make a uh, modification. Uh, first of all, I like to use a, f a smaller pan, not quite so high for puppies. I only happen to have one puppy right now, so I'm just going to do this for one, but you can uh, get the point and, and use it for several dogs. I do use a full egg, okay? I use essentially the exact same ingredients, just smaller portions. I also use, like to use the leg, and the reason is there's more bone in it. And as puppies have little skeletons that are developing and developing, the calcium in them is important because I'm sure many of you have seen cases of rickets. And rickets is no fun for any dogs, no fun for any owner, and so if you just feed mostly flesh, your pups will get rickets. Matter of fact, I did an experiment once, I fed only the hamburger. I used the same stuff, but just with the hamburger meat and not the chicken and the bone and my dogs started getting uh, rickets, they started looking bad, and I went back to chicken within one week and a half, I couldn't tell. So the, the, the bone in the chicken is critical. Um, some people might argue that, well, you need the red meat because red meat has zinc and, and this doesn't have zinc. Well, that's where that comes in. Eggs have zinc. This has zinc. The bones are critical for any dog, so that's why I prefer the chicken. So what I do is, oops, I cut it in smaller pieces if I have really young puppies. I just cut it in smaller pieces like that to make it easy for them. And yeah, there's there's bone splinters here, but guess what? That's part of life. That's what happens when, when they come off mama's tit and start and mama brings them a kill. They eat bones. 
Would you excuse me one moment? All right, sorry about that. I had a mail lady come by. Anyway, I chopped this up in little pieces for smaller puppies, depending on how small they are. You know, when they start hitting 12 weeks, I just give them the whole chicken. I mean, the whole piece. But, you know, from four weeks, which is when I start weaning, from four weeks to, um, I'd say 12 weeks, I do this chopping and the pieces grow and grow as they get bigger and bigger. Again, I don't like to smack it because all my dogs start barking and you won't be able to hear me. So, the flesh you can leave in bigger pieces. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but you know, well, I was going to say work isn't a four-letter word, but it is a four-letter word, so <laughs> forget I said that. It's good to work. Some four-letter words are good. You can get your wife to do that, so much the better. But. fingers sometimes. I've almost chopped the end off of mine a few times. That's about all the smaller it needs to be. This is for very small puppies. I would I would have left most of that intact for, you know, eight, nine, ten week old pups. Okay, let me wash my hands for one second. Towel. Good thing to have a paper towel when you're uh, handling raw food. Okay, so now another thing I do different is I don't give them quite as much rice. I don't like puppies to be to have be full of rice, so I give them just a little bit. Okay, and I give an extra helping of yogurt, lots of calcium, and because puppies don't have quite as advanced a digestion system. Excuse me, one second. quite as advanced a digestive system, these extra enzymes in the yogurt will assist them uh, with their digestion. Okay, I also don't use as much uh, of this. I give maybe this much for a puppy of the vegetable. I don't use a lot of vegetable. I don't use a whole lot of rice. And with the egg, a lot. I keep my dogs in above ground pens, as uh, you've seen in the uh, bitch video. And a lot of times if you just give them a, a, an egg, they'll chew on it and the egg will drop through and they won't get the nutrition. So what I do with the egg is, yeah, I give them the whole egg with the shell, but I, I mix it in smaller pieces so that they can digest the entire egg and, and get that egg shell for their calcium. Okay, I did cook this egg a little too much, so that was my bad, but I'm sure they'll live. Okay. Mix all that up. Get another paper towel. Oh, somebody wants to talk to me. Don't have to wait. Um, so then, these vitamins, they really don't need this whole damn vitamin. If you think about it, this vitamin here is for a fully sized uh, adult human being. I use this for uh, a pit bull. It could be argued they could use a third, but it's easy. For a puppy, I don't, he doesn't really need this whole thing. So what I do is I pull out a, a knife. I got one sitting right here. And I chop it in half. Okay, I'll give him the smaller piece. And then I will I'll stick it right in the middle of this glop of yogurt. I'll hold it off at the side for a second. And then I take a little bit of warm water. Okay, get this thing warm. And just a little water so the uh, egg yolk doesn't stick. Now I mix it up like this. It's a big, nice, pulpy 
goopy puppy mulch. They've got their veggies, they've got their eggs, they've got their chicken, they've got a little rice, they've got their vitamin pillar, they will shortly. They've got animal fat too in there and here. The lard is animal fat and they've got a little vitamin. They eat that as their little dessert. And that's puppy group. This right here is for uh, one, how old is he, 12 week old puppy. I don't usually mix it that fine for him, but that's how I would mix it for a very, very, very small puppy and get them started. And that's at about four weeks. Puppies can eat this just fine. This is, looks big and yep, they'll chew it and they'll chew it. They can eat really large objects. Um, the bones are small, they chew them, it gets their, their jaw muscles going, they get used to using their mouth as a, as a tool and as a weapon. And uh, other than that, the exact same thing my adults do. And if anyone's taking a look at my dogs, I've got some nice looking pups and they glow, they glow with vitality. And again, this is cheaper than kibble. It is a little more time intensive, I admit, but I do put the time into my dogs. And to me, if you and really to anyone if they want to analyze, those who put the extra time into their dogs are the extra special dog men and dog women. Uh, anybody can take a bag of kibble, go, oops, maybe there's a little piece, a little bag of kibble and, and dump it in front of their dogs and their dogs eat it off the ground or if they're lucky they get a bowl. That's not really, uh, that's not really top caliber ownership. Person who goes through the trouble, and I know a lot of people who do go through to, uh, through the trouble to make the feed for their dogs. It doesn't take too much longer, maybe an hour of your time more. But what you get back from that, in terms of their health, their fertility, the health of the pups, uh, it is so much more than just that hour's worth of time. Whereas the opposite is true with kibble. You may save yourself uh, an hour a day by having to not make this. But what you get over time are dogs that get worse and worse and worse. I mean, sure, everything dies over time, but I've, I've made uh, statistical records of the amount of pups I would get feeding uh, raw versus kibble, the amounts, the incidence of cancer as they get older, how long it takes. My bitch, I've had, when I first started feeding a cheap kibble, I had several bitches, I know of people have several bitches get uh, breast cancer between the ages of five and seven and, and be dead. <laughs> dead by five or seven, uh, by nine for sure. I've got 14 year old bitches, no breast cancer from uh, whose mother had it, whose sister over in someone else's yard being fed kibble is dying of cancer, mine's fine. Yes, bit, uh, cancer in the breast is the number one cause of death, of death of bitches. You can't avoid these things, but you can prolong them. Same with yourself. I mean, whether I eat McDonald's and, and, and Dollar General food, I'm gonna die someday. But uh, take a look at me as a 45 year old man and, and my level of athleticism versus a 45 year old man who eats McDonald's junk food and Dollar General hostess ho-hos there's no comparison and and it's the quality of life not just that you're alive but it's the quality of life and this uh, feeding regimen that I'm showing you will give your dogs a much much better quality of life without sapping into your wallet most people think they gotta spend more to do that, and, and that can be true, um, but this is as cheap as cheap dog food. You just have to give an hour a day more of your time, and that's it. And so if you can uh, divide up your time or reschedule your your lifestyle to such a way that, that you do this, you, you'll be healthier, uh, sharing that with your wife and family, the juices of that, and giving that to your dogs, and your dogs will be healthier. So uh, with that said, um, I'm going to show you the extra special ingredients I give to the stud dogs now and, uh, and then um, we'll move on to the next section, okay?